Purdy. Um, my Facebook page is Purdy Special Art. And I have been saying that I'm going to be having these pour classes. And I think maybe you need an explanation of what a pour class is because it's, I think it's fairly new. It's not like a paint night at all. You get something completely different and it's your very own creation and it's at the end it's just magical. At the end you will end up having something like this. You'll have something like this or you could have something like this. Everybody's is different. It'll all be whatever colors you choose. But before I get started, I kind of want to explain the process of what goes into these colors, these pores, what kind of uh, materials we use. So the thing that we use, of course, is your acrylic paint. Today I have apple barrel, but it could be any kind. There's all different kinds, like, well, the white here I'm using is craft paint. So you could get it at Winco, I mean not Winco, um, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Michaels, any place that sells acrylic paint. So what we do is we mix the Floetrol, which is a medium that helps the paint flow easier across the canvas. We'll mix the Floetrol with the acrylic paint. I like to do one part paint to two parts Floetrol. Um, I don't measure it exactly, but, and then once I have that mixed, I will add something called silicone. It's nothing more than this, in this case, it's a treadmill oil. Some people use WD-40, some people use coconut hair oil, um, anything that has silicone in it you can use, but only a few drops. And I'll explain that a little bit later. So, when you come to class, this will already be done for you. I will have already added the Floetrol and the paint together for you into one of these little cups. I'm going to do it now just to demonstrate. Some room here, probably shouldn't have chosen white. Not a good color to choose from, but here you go. Um, so, I will take my white acrylic paint Mix it up a little bit, pour it into here, and I'll just pour, I'll, I'll, you know, just a little bit. It's not a ton. You don't need a lot. You need whatever you're going to use. And then I kind of eyeball it, so I look at that and I go, okay, one, and then I'll put Floetrol into it, about two parts Floetrol. That's about it. Like I said, I eyeball it. You can measure it out, but usually just one of these to two of those is good enough. And then what you need to do is thoroughly mix it up. So then you will mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. So you put your Floetrol into your acrylic paint. To save time at my classes, I've already done that. I've already added the Floetrol to a bunch of different colors. I have some, one, I have some examples of the colors here. We'll have those at the class with some other colors. Those already have the Floetrol and the acrylic mixed together, ready to go. I just did that in the interest of time, but I thought I'd show you how I do it. So that is what we do to get the paint ready. And in just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do actually do a pour. But first I want to tell you, when you do my pour class, you're going to go home with an 8x10 canvas and an 11 by 14 canvas. So we will do two acrylic pours. You'll go home with two magical creations that you made your very own self. So in just one minute or a few seconds, I will let you see the process of how a pour is done. Thank you. So we're back. I kind of cleared things away. I am, um, when you come to my pour class, I will give you these wonderful gloves and they are latex free. For those of you that wonder about that, because I know there are some latex allergies out there. So these are latex free. And this really attractive um, apron is just so cute. 
to um, cover yourself up so you don't get paint all over yourself. I'll also give you a pan, which you can put your pour on top of. I'll show you about that in a minute so you have some place for it to drip. And you'll have something underneath. So you'll have all this sitting there waiting for you. You'll go over, you'll choose your colors. Oh, what colors do I want? I like the blue. I like the pink. The black might look good with it. And always have white. We're going to layer the white in between some of the colors. Because sometimes the colors, if you mix them, say uh, orange and black, if you put them right next to each other in the cup, it might come out muddy looking. So if you lay the white between it, it might break the two apart. So always have white. So then you'll come over to the table and you'll take your colors and you will open them up and you will stir them. You'll have stir sticks. And so I'm gonna stir them up really good. And if they're really, really thick, like this pink is a little tiny thick, I will give you some water and a spray bottle. And you can go ahead and put a few squirts of water in there because to help thin it out, and that's fine, it's perfectly fine, you can do that. But you wanna do all this before you add your silicone. Silicone is the last thing you do. I'll explain in a minute. So we're gonna stir that one up. Now that's a little bit soupier. It's kind of, it runs better. It's not real heavy. You don't want it really, really heavy. Let's see how the black is. Black looks pretty good. Stir it up. Because I have um, pre-done the Floetrol and the acrylic paint. So we want to, you know, make sure it's all mixed up. It's been sitting there for a day. So we'll stir it up. And there we go. So now we are ready to rock and roll. This is when the magic happens. We will take our colors. And first of all, we're going to put a few drops. Actually, in the class, I'm going to go ahead and do this for you because you only want two or three drops of silicone. If you get too many drops, it won't come out as good, the little cells, and we'll talk about that. Um, well, actually, I can show you what that is now on this. If you can bring that camera up just a little bit closer. These little things here are called the cells. And you like these to come out in your painting. It would, it would add the pizzazz to it. So it's the silicone that helps bring out those cells. So I will help you, but if you were to do it on your own, you will just put two or three drops in there. So that's all I'm going to do. Come a little bit closer. We're just going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and you don't put it in the white. One, two, and three. And the next thing you do is you do not, you stir it like three or four times, but you don't stir it, stir it, stir it. Once the silicone's in, you just go, or, there you go. I don't know why I took the sticks out a minute ago. I wasn't thinking. One, two, three, four. There you go. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're ready to create the magic. So, like I said, when you come to class, you'll have the colors already. I'll help you with the silicone. You'll have your canvas, and then we put the colors into the cups. I think I'll start with a little bit of white, just a little bit of each. So it's kind of a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You'll see. So a little bit of white. So then I think I'll go with my blue. Gotta come a little bit closer with my blue. Can you see down there? And then do some pink. And I'll add my black. I pour from the side, but you can pour down from the top too. Now I think I'll, or I'll do some white, kind of layer some white in there. Don't have to, but I think I should split it apart. A little bit of blue, some more pink. You never know how this is going to turn out. It's magical. I think I'm going to wait on the black. It's a pretty heavy color and it really kind of takes over. So I think I'm going to wait on that. 
I'm going to add some more white and maybe some more blue and a little bit of pink. You don't have to use everything that's in the cup, but I want to make sure I gave you enough paint to cover your whole canvas. So the next thing you do is you take your canvas and I dripped a little bit on there and that's fine. It's okay. And you take your canvas, excuse me, I'm itch. Um, you put the canvas on top of the cup and then you hold it. And I am right-handed, so I'm going to do it this way. You put the canvas on top of the cup. Put your grip on it. And then you flip it over. So we're going to flip it over. And there it sits. We'll put it on top of the pan that I've given you just for the drips. Let me move this to the side. We're going to wait just about 10 seconds. Kind of make sure everything gets down in there. Go, 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 go. And then when you lift it, magic. Everybody's will be different. So here we go. Let's get a good shot of this. Here we go. Whoa. Look at that. That is pretty. That is pretty. But see, I'm glad I didn't put any more black in because it really kind of took over. So now you want it to cover your canvas. So you're going to tilt it. And this is the part that's really kind of fun because you'll tilt it in any direction to try and cover up the whole canvas. And I'm liking this. I don't know why I haven't done these colors before. And I'll let it go down there. You just kind of have to let it flow. That's where the flow trial helps. It helps that acrylic paint flow onto your canvas. The corners are really hard. You got to make sure you get those corners. Then you go over here. If you want, it's up to you. You got to look at the cells. If you like your cells, you know, like say, I really like these cells. Well, maybe I don't want to stretch it out too much. So let's say I'm going to go a little bit more for this corner. But I don't want to stretch that out any more than that, so I'm going to leave that even though the corner doesn't have any paint on it yet. I'll come back to that. Now I'll try and cover this side. And I kind of like how that looks, so I'm going to leave that. I think I want to bring some of the black down a little bit, so we can do that. Watch it just come down. And really, you just make it look the way you want it to look. Now you look and you say, okay, well, everything's covered on the sides. Oh, but look at this. There's not, they're not covered here. It's not covered here. Well, you have a little pile of acrylic right there in your bin. So you can take it and just pat it on there. Kind of cover up your edges for yourself. Or here, cover these up a little bit. You might end up covering all of it right away. But in case you don't, I just want to let you know that you always can use your leftovers to make sure everything's covered. And then there you have it. You end up with your acrylic pour. And this is what we will do at the class. We will make one of these. This is an 11 by 14. And like I told you earlier, we will do, I have put paint on it, but you'll also do after that, you can pick more colors. You can use the same colors, it's up to you. Then we'll do an eight by 10. And so when you leave, you'll have two creations, um, an eight by 10 and an 11 by 14. Now they're going to be wet. So what will happen is I will give you some really stiff, stiff cardboard to put it on and you'll have to put it in your trunk and dry it as carefully as you can when you go home and uh, it should be fine. I've done this before, I've had no complaints. Nobody seems to drive so crazy that their paints have been ruined. But um, that or if the place we are having the pour, like I know the flying pig is, is cool about it. Um, if you wanna leave them there and come back in two days and get them, you can do that. But taking them home on a, pair, on a piece of really stiff cardboard will work just fine. And that's it. So now you know what a pour class is. 
and hopefully you will join us. And I want to real quickly just give you the dates again. Um, we're going to be, sorry about that, June 9th from 2 to 4 at the Leals Coop in Auburn, California, the Flying Pig. We're also going to be doing a pour on June 11th on Kirby Way from 6 to 8. And I'm going to be doing a class on June 14th at Time and Space from 6 to 8. That's on Burn Street in Roseville. So hopefully you can sign up for one of those classes and go home with two beautiful creations. Thanks for watching.